stream. Live from Houston, Texas, where it looks like Sammy, Ellie, and Chester are working on something for Christmas? Who knows what those guys are up to? Hey, Ginger, are you out there anywhere? Hey, John, we're over here. You want to just uh, scoot the camera over? i got to find you. Hold on. Can you find Oh, us? there you are. Hi, I guess you saw the guys in the pool, you guys. That, uh, Taking advantage you, I, of the nice Houston weather, talking about Christmas, I think. I, I've been hearing them whispering in a corner, you guys. Something about a Christmas in July. A Christmas special in July. Ooh, well, we'll keep you guys informed about that. Welcome. I'm glad everybody decided to come. I know that a lot of you were excited, you know, pleased when I showed you last night that we were going to do some sunflowers today. And um, we're going to do them on 8x10 canvas. And, and this is a really, I think, fun, bright, cheerful painting. But, you know, why is it that some still lifes are just going, oh, it's a still life, blah, 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 ah, ah, you know, uh, uh, you know? And, then, and then there's others who are going, oh, man, that's just beautiful. What is it, what makes your still life pop? What is it that makes one painting just, everybody goes, that's so pretty. And then others, you're just going, well, it's nice, you know, and it could be done perfectly well, and you're just going, ho oh, hum, boring. It kind of reminds me of... Uh, when they used to have American Idol and the people would be singing and the, they would say, it's boring. It wasn't that the person didn't sing it well. So sometimes just being able to paint something isn't enough. Now you've got to, now we're going to just, remember in the old days it wasn't, a, you know, in the old days, uh, gosh, I, sorry, the thanks everybody. Days. The old days. We used to talk about the when I was a kid days. growing up, okay, the thing to have was a tan, okay, and that, and then uh, that wasn't enough. Then you had to, then you had to be buff and had a tan. It wasn't enough. So now it isn't enough to be able to draw competently. We want you to be able to have, you know, have your paintings be exciting, have the colors uh, pop out at you. And we're going to talk about what makes that happen. Because those of you who may be uh, progressing along here, maybe entering art shows or having paintings for sale, what, 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 what resonates with people, okay? What, you know, what makes something besides the subject? Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that too as we're painting. So if you'd be so kind, John, I'm going to hold this up for just a second. Can you see it? Yeah. This is the, um, the John maybe has this up in the corner. This is what we're going to be painting tonight. No, as a matter of fact, I don't. On an, on an 8 by 10 canvas. And let's get to it. What do you say that? And if, right now we want to thank uh, John Little for getting all this equipment up and re ready for us today. Uh, John is our executive director, our co-owner of GingerCookLive.Gallery where we do creative, uh, uh, amazing acrylic art lessons online for people and offer personal art coaching. So that's our plug. We get to do that every time. And let's just get down to the business of teaching you guys uh, in the best way I know how so that you can easily uh, create this, uh, this glass vase and these sunflowers, okay? This is pretty simple. Okay. Looks complicated. It's time consuming, but it isn't hard. There's a difference, okay? All right, so next, John, are we down here on the we table? Are, we are down there. All right, so I'm going to wiggle the fingers down, down here. Okay, so hi, everybody. <laughs> wiggle ooh, the ooh, fingers. Hi, I love hi. Them. All right. We so, still have your picture up there. No, so don't worry. We can still see you. Okay, so now, all right, so you see my color wheel, and you'll see this vase here. Now, the first the question we're going to answer is, what makes this painting really pop? I mean, what is it that really uh, del um, delights us about this painting? And the thing of it is, is that, Football teams and, and uh, commercial companies have known about this for years. They take color combinations that resonate with people that kind of affect our nervous system. I even red and green for Christmas are something that, you know, red and green's a compliment. Now what we mean is that if you have a color wheel, red is opposite green on the color wheel. So when you start uh, putting those colors together, uh, people resonate to that. Uh, turquoise and orange, for instance. Uh, last night, we, I showed you about this picture. All right, so what was it? Look at the turquoise and the orange. You see how that just does something to our nervous system, okay? And, and purple and yellow. So, and the original picture, which I'm not going to show you the original painting, but it looks very much like this, but if you want to see the original <laughs> photograph, you can go to, Pint, to paint my photo. All right, that's the original photo I took this from. And the background was just a plain uh, white wall. Wasn't anything to Boring. it. Boring. It was just boring. It was if I had painted it just the way the photo was, it wouldn't be all that interesting. But by painting the background purple, and then and taking advantage of the fact that uh, purple is the complement of yellow, all right. Now suddenly this background 
a pop, so we have different subtle t tones. And also we've got we've got a light source. Okay, we've got uh, you know a shadow. We've got some lights and darks and so forth. We'll show you how to do that. So there's a couple of ways we can get this picture on a little eight by ten canvas. Here's a, a just a black and white copy of this. Isn't it pretty? Even a black and white, this is pretty. This would be. This sounds really crazy. But this would be a pretty embroidery one too. And if you did, I used to do machine embroidery. This would be pretty. But anyway. Um, you can see where we've got these tones. Now, if you look at our color wheel, for instance, uh, there's no real black in here. See, the dark, darkest color we have is sort of a combination between that because one of the things that will make your still lifes pop is throw the black out. Just forget about that. We're not using black. And if you do, and I know a lot of artists do, but if that's the fastest way to kill colors. And I can tell you for years, I've been selling my artwork all over the world for years. Um, won all kinds of awards, and one of the things people always say is, oh my God, can you believe this woman's colors? Well, I learned a long time ago from a Walter Foster book that I think I paid a dollar for, and it was called, co about color mixing, and the se secret was leave, get rid of the black, okay? If you throw out the black, learn to mix the colors, that will make a big difference, and you can see kind of that it does. All right, so we can either trace this on, I'm going to show you also how we're going to draw it on, because I think it's important not to rely, I mean, traceables are fast and easy, and I don't mind doing that, but I want you to understand this would be so easy to draw this on. I want to, I'm going to draw it on the chalkboard and then I'm going to trace it on here. I'm sure I had to do it either way, okay? So you don't have to um, worry about that. Let me just show you how this would be. So here's our, here's our, here's our uh, picture, okay? So one of the things when you're trying to draw something on here, when you're trying to draw something on, John, can you print me out the second one of these? Will it print out again? I have to, no, I have to have No, it, it won't? Okay. I just give me the painting again. I can do it. Can you do it real quick? Because I want to show you guys a, a trick, okay? I'm going, to just, I'm going to just go ahead and fold this in half, and then I'm going to fold this paper in half again, like that. All right, now, now look. Now, what did I learn from that? Well, I learned that, um, that the halfway point on my, can you know, so, so this would say this is the halfway point of my picture, okay? Like that, that's halfway, and that goes right through and then here's this part right here here's the middle part right here let's just draw this down like that it's an interesting trick on I mean, how to get something on a canvas and you'll notice that the center part of this fold all right you see that the center part of this fold goes right through the middle of this flower right so that's right here so i just know like this okay i'm just showing you i just know that this is where this is where the center section of my sunflower is and then i notice that it's doing this like that, okay? So I know that that's the center part of the flower. And I mean, how hard is it to make a daisy? I mean, you know, how to make petals. I mean, come on, you guys, how hard is that? I mean, that's, that's not hard, okay? So I'm just trying to let you understand you don't have a computer handy, you don't have a traceable, you don't have any of that stuff. How, you know, you just have a picture that you can, maybe you print it out and you want to try to draw it on yourself. Now, what else can we learn from this? Well. If we, what we learn is, is that, um, and again, you can fold it a lot of different ways to figure out how to do something. So this is the center of our vase. It's about one finger up from the bottom. And here's, the, I'm just going to show you, here's the line here. Here's the halfway point right here. Well, slightly above the halfway point, but bef you know, before this, um, you know, what I could do, for instance, is just, and I'll show you, I could just fold this over again. I want you to see how I might do that, all right? Fold this side over again. Well, what does that tell me? That right here, if I put a line right down the middle here, our vase is coming out here like this and just crossing this line here, all right? So it doesn't matter. You don't even have to have a ruler, and, and thanks so much. You don't even have to have a ruler to do that. You know that it's circular here. You could do the same thing here. Let's just do that here for a minute. I'll show you here like that. There's the halfway point, and it's going to do the same thing on this side. It's going to come out about like this and then come around here. So it's a U. It's the letter U. You've been drawing the letter U your whole life. This isn't tricky. Yeah? Okay, so think when you're trying, then you know you've got your, and then, again, here's the halfway point. Let me just show you right here. And so it's about two fingers down in the middle and about a finger down here. And you've got the, um, just where the, the, the bottom petal, just where it crosses the bottom petal is where it uh, curves up like this, where the inside of your vase is. Does that make sense? So then you know this is up here, and then you're going to come up here, and you're going to go 
all right, I've got another flower that's coming up this way, you know, like that. And here's your petals, all right? And then you know that on the side here, right where this fold is, okay, I want you to see that, right on this fold, kind of here, you've got another one, dot, 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 because this was almost done in a circle like this. You've got another daisy flowing out. So when you're trying to draw something in, do something like this. Take advantage of the fact that if you've got even the slightest printout, start gridding it just a little bit. You don't have to have millions of squares to make this work, all right? You just, I mean, does anybody have any questions about how I, how I came up with this? Is everybody kind of good about that? All right, so now that we know how to draw that in, and you could do now, that were, were easily. Were you expecting an answer? Um, well, I thought that maybe you would read the questions and then... Well, you know, it's about a two or three minute delay before they're going to see it. And then the, by the and, time and they the delay. answer... There's a two or three minute delay. All right. So again, I'm going to bring this top part down. <coughs> Sorry. Top part down here like this. Fold it there. And lo and behold, and I was right, that's just where the top flower comes out of here, you see. So, I mean, that's how you, that's how you would draw something like that in. Perfect. I, I so, everybody's got it. I, haven't, I don't see any comments coming through with all it. All right, so. so I think that, and it's just really such a handy thing to do. Now, your other, other option, you know, is... Option um, two. Is option two is to just uh, take a, you know, some transfer paper. Lay the, lay the cover out so they can see the cover. And this is called, um, this is by Sorel. Now, Sorel makes, makes this in two sizes. This was their sampler with five different colors, which I liked, because... Years ago, I never could find this, and all I found was uh, like uh, wax paper rolls, you know, like the wax paper roll thing, and yeah. um, you, you, you have yards of it, and you can use it over and over again, a lifetime of wax paper, you know, and because you, you keep using it, you don't throw it away once you've used it like wax paper. So then you're talking about, it was fairly pricey too, so then you, if you need a white, you need a yellow and some colors, you've got an investment in all this transfer paper where you can buy a couple packages of this. We found this on Amazon. What was this, about five bucks? No, eight ninety five. Eight ninety five. 95 eight ninety five. Well, still, it was, a, it was great. Well, and you use it over and over. Well, you use it over and over again. And, you know, if you kind of take reasonable care, up. take reasonable care of it, all right? So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to lay this picture. And we want to say a special thank you to Michelle for the donation. Oh, Michelle, thank you so much. That is so kind. You know, this, you know, somebody had, you know, Sorrell didn't give me that paper. I had to buy it. So we appreciate it very much. <laughs> we got to buy all our stuff. We're just we like you guys. Good, we're just like you. We buy all our stuff. You know, we're good shoppers, but we buy all our stuff. And I'm a little reluctant sometimes to take any free stuff uh, because I won't, if I don't like it, boy, I won't endorse it. <laughs> I mean, I just won't, because it's hard we enough. We like to, to be able to say what we can. I, I want to be able to say it sucks if it does, and I want to just say that, you know? <laughs> I mean, I just, I'm is, sorry. Is that, is that what you're saying? You know, come on, Ginger, hold back. Now, come on. Come no, on. I, no, because I'm, I'm telling you what, it's, it's, um, it's disappointing to buy things that don't work out. How about that? It does. All right, All right. so I painted my, can, my canvas is dazzling purple, and I'm going to just go ahead and line this picture up and then I'm going to just tape it on on one side so it doesn't move, okay? See That'd how I'm doing that? Okay. That's how you do transfer paper. Now, n now I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got the proper size down and I need a good pen, which Should I think I had here. Do I have yeah. a pen here? Yeah, I put one in your container there. Yeah, you did. Thank you. So let's, let's make sure this is working. No, wrong side. Try this again. <laughs> I never can remember which side is which. Obviously, that's the side, wasn't it? Okay? Yes, it is. So it does do test it. And the reason you use a pen, for two reasons, is the pen's a little stronger. Now, sometimes things will come along, you've done a really nice thing, and someone will say, oh, that is so nice, you look so unbusy. Aunt Martha <laughs> would just love one of these paintings, and you really owe it to her to do one. And you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I've spent all this time drawing this out. And... Um, I've got to do it again, but if you have a, you know, if you can do something like this and you have a pen, you can just, you know where you've uh, gone, just do a different color pen next time. Yep. So we're going to, we're going to just, uh, this is okay, we should be all right. So I'm just going to take this and uh, draw around the vase, okay, like that. Do you that. have this uh, picture up on Pinterest now? Do I have this on Pinterest now? Yeah. I don't. Oh, um, I have it on Paint My Photo under Ginger Cook. Okay, if you go to paint my photo, which is what PNP PMP hyphen PMP hyphen art dot com, and, then, and uh, go to the Ginger Cook and go to my gallery, you'll see it. You can get it there for right now. Yeah, and you it's it's a free site. You have to sign up for it though. 
but it's a free well, site. Well, same as Pinterest. It's like any of those things. They Eventually, want you to sign we're going to have these things over in our in our in our form, but we're just. But I will tonight, right after right after the broadcast. I will go downstairs. The first thing I'll do is put it on Pinterest for you guys. Okay, I will do that. So I've got this now. I'm just going to go ahead. And I'll and, try to get it into the form as well. And, and, and we'd like to thank Karen for the donation. Greatly appreciated. We can get now some more Sorel paper. Oh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it very much. Now, the thing about it is, is that it does make it um, easier to do something again. Um, see, all right. Now, look how fast. I think this is pretty good. And the reason I like a pen is I pencils really aren't strong enough, and I can kind of see where I've been. All right. So then I've got a I've got a flower coming on the outside like this. One over here. I mean it's not it's just I just I'm just generally want an idea of where everything is. Choop 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 choop. Okay, and then that, what was this up here? I don't even know. I could probably I could imagine what that would be. And there was some of this stuff. And then on this side, here was a another group of petals. And you know, you just you don't need it perfect. This is the thing. You really don't need it perfect. How did we do? Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, you need a rough idea where you're going, you, right? You just need a rough idea of what you're going to do. It's, it's sort of, uh, it's like, you know, signing your name. If you, it's pretty close, you know, to what you've done. Now, do you want to come in here like this and indicate a few um, petals? I think you could probably figure this one out where the stems are. But, you know, you could if you wanted to just do a couple lines so you know where they go. You could do that. But this is um, this is what I have so far. So, you know, that's that's uh, that's really all the information I need. Okay, I think I had a little leaf up there, but uh, I mean, I'm sure I could figure out how to put a leaf up there. So I really don't need anything else than that. And then again, we, we've used this paper a number of times, and it just goes back into the little container and it's 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 really lovely it's handy and also if you you know needed to do some fancy lettering or something you know you can print out some you know with the fonts on a computer anymore you can put out some pretty neat lettering and then come back and use it it's very handy if you had to make make something so okay so that's going away this is here our um we'll put this out of the way and now we've got our picture pen goes back in the holder this one is out of the way. We're going to take our, um, take. can we see this picture pretty well here still? Or maybe I need to put it here. Can you still see it? Hold it's right here. It's right um, next to me like this. Yeah, yeah, you can do it there. I yeah. can just leave it right there. All right, so what do we know? For instance, well, we know that yellow only happily paints over white. Everybody remembers that, okay? Hey, so we'd like to thank Sherry for the don do that donation. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe we can get some speech therapy. Hey, thanks, Sherry. Very much. We really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so I know, I know that yellow only paints over white. I mean, you can paint yellow over purple, but good luck with that. It doesn't show up. Uh, oil paints don't seem to have this problem, but uh, acrylics really do. I don't know. Whatever goes into our yellows. So the first thing we're going to do is take a little angle brush like this and... Um, Somebody said, I'd tell you the best place, to, you know, these are uh, silver angle brushes. And this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. And um, you, uh, the place where I've been getting them, and I buy them, and I, we made a deal. Actually, Cinnamon, my daughter Cinnamon, the art sherpa, she originally started talking to these people. They're called the brush guys. And, um, and she, they, they, she put them in touch with, with me. And we have an, art, have an artist page there on their site with the brushes that I like. Though I haven't added the Bristolons, and I really like those. But it doesn't matter. If you use my name, Ginger uh, Cook. One word. One word. All one word. And you can use that as a cut to check out for a code. You get 5% off the brushes, which is really nice. And uh, one of our friends, uh, Sylvia from Australia, she said they charged her $25 to ship everything to Australia. So that's what was the... They, they ship around the world, and sometimes they're, it seems like they're out of these little angle brushes a lot. And I, and I remember one time, where's my angle brushes? And they said, well, we'll have some, we have them in every week. He says, if you see them out, don't panic, because they, they, they know you guys want them, okay? Let's just bring these in a little bit more here. They know you want them, and um, so they'll, they're going to try and get, you know, they try to keep them in. All right, so now we're going to come up here like this one, as long as we're doing this. We can, we can be chatting um, and doing this. So, you know, we're talking about things that, what, what makes, 
uh, you know, what makes a painting sell at a gallery? What, you know, why this? P people will, here's the rule, you guys, uh, just as we're chatting here, you probably want to know this, okay? People will spend money for their picture that goes over the sofa. That's, that's their first thing. If they're going to buy any original art, okay, they, they will buy it first for going, for if it goes over the sofa. And people will then spend money for uh, probably the uh, dining room and maybe the master bedroom. And if, if they have a big enough house, maybe the entry hall. And then after that, it's probably some sort of small little print or something for the kitchen. And, you know, maybe the... Guest bathroom uh, or guest, you No, know, prints for the guest bathroom. Any purse, probably it's something they found at Hobby Lobby or something <laughs> in a little frame, okay? I mean, that's what people do. I mean, they, not everybody can afford original art, and you guys as artists, you know, sometimes you don't appreciate how easy it is to just whip something out, hang your art over the house, but the average person can't afford to do that. So if you, when you're thinking about it, when you're thinking about, oh, well, okay, I want to I paint something. I'd like to be able to, to pay for my art supplies. What am I going to do? One of the things you can do, is uh, paint something that goes over the couch. So now, what, what goes over a couch? Well, think about the average <coughs> house in Houston has, <coughs> the people, probably, people who buy art have high ceilings, but a lot of people don't. So you probably, probably want to think of a pair of something, pair of paintings, that put together make kind of one big painting, okay? okay. And so then, what, so then you're talking about, well, what are people buying today, okay? Because paintings go out of style just like clothes do. I mean, Monet's or Renoir's and <clears throat> those kind of things, they don't, but, and, but, but the average painting, and think about this, for those of you who are in my generation, think about when we, when I was in, uh, so, I don't know, but in my 20s, what was really big was um, old trucks in fields of daisies with a barn behind. You guys Nothing wrong with that. Well, but they're, that's coming back, but boy, that went out of style a long time ago, time ago. and certain styles of paint, certain styles of paintings go out of style, and certain styles come in. Now, and then also, for instance, uh, probably somebody, an attorney, isn't going to put a big flower, bunch of flowers uh, 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 in his office. With a, This probably wouldn't go in an attorney's office, okay? So, you know, the paintings go certain places. Abstracts uh, are pretty much an interesting uh, place to... Um, you know, abstracts pretty much go in any kind of modern home. And I, I remember belonging to a publisher who just really bugged the heck out of me. There was this woman in, that was in this group I was in. She was selling like mad, just really like mad. And she was making these really hideous abstracts. I mean, I thought they were just awful. But she was selling them, so, you know, who am I, right? She was selling them, and they were just pretty much black and red, okay? And... And, and they said, well, you know, you could paint something like that. And I go, well, yeah, I could. I could. But um, I, can't, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't stand that. Ah! You know, ah, ah. Just couldn't stand it. So um, sometimes it's an artist, you know, you don't want to sell your soul. You know, you've got to say, well, what could I paint that's exciting to me? That's the question. That still makes me happy that if I, I wanted to sell to somebody else. All right? So here, we're just taking a little white paint here at the angle like that. Using just the tip of it, okay. You're using a three eighths recorder on this. This is a three. Uh, I think this is a three eighths. You know the handwriting. The, 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 the let's put my glasses on. Uh, it looks like three eighths. I think it, I see an eight in here. Pretty much all the little writing wears off. Thanks to three eighths. Okay, here you go. Sorry. So there's my bowl, and it's not not as round somehow as. How could I trace it and not have it as round? <laughs> how is that even possible? I ask you. Do you ever wonder that? How is that possible? You saw me trace it on there. So how, okay, but I, but I, I have the magic wand here. I know how to fix this. I'm going to just gonna kind of even it out here. Gosh, just extraordinary how you could just do that. Okay, so now this is what we've got. So plan B. So while we're doing that, let's find her. That can be drying. Let's find a brush that we're willing to screw up a little bit. And you're already going really, yeah, because you wear out brushes, you know oh, that, right? Yes. You wear out brushes. Yeah, we got to do another brush order. We have another brush order coming up. We wear them out. That's too big. I feel like Goldilocks here with the brushes. Um, uh, here's an angle brush, clean. but it's a little sad, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice this one. All right, so I'm going to take a little purple, 
and some titanium white. Those are the colors we're using is uh, titanium white, zinc or mixing white, doesn't matter, either one, that's your transparent white, okay? Um, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, burnt sienna, and cad red medium. Now, uh, that's pretty much it. And, and that's what we use all the time. I don't usually put my colors in the beginning of the description because we use the same colors all the time. We might add a magenta, we might add a burnt umber, but pretty much if you have my few colors, you can pretty much do anything we do. All right, so there's my light purple. I'm going to add a tiny bit, like less than 1% yellow oxide. And what that does, because yellow is opposite purple on the color wheel, okay, what that does is it um, tones down the yellow. Now, see, I need a little rag here, something, a little cloth. Here we go, like that. I'm going to wipe off the brush. As I put the paint on, wiped it off. Now I'm going to come up here like this, making little circles. And I'm going to come around here over my dried white, of dried purple. Okay, now I'm going to take a little more of that. Here's a little bit more of that. Wipe the brush. And I'm just going to start uh, lightening up this background a little bit. Now the trick is when you do something like this, because you kind of know where stuff's going, I know that I, my goal here was to um, just come in here like a little bit. My goal was a little bit more yellow oxide so it's a little grayer, okay, so not so bright, okay. And then a little bit of purple. And yellow oxide, a little bit of purple. Here's our purple. We're coming up here like that and kind of blending them in together. It's almost like our second coat of color, all right? So you see how we're starting to add, just kind of blend these in together. All right, now let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of white into that purple mixture, okay? A little bit of more titanium white, okay? Now let's come over here like this. A little more white, that's too dark. Wipe the brush off. Okay, and I'm just going to come down around here. That, that's perfect, all right, like that. Let's say here's our kind of our, our shadowy stuff underneath here. This is one of the, the best things about having a, a painting that you've already got some dried paint on. So very handy. And let's come up here with a little bit of this. Um, just sneak this in here like that. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, why do some people say black makes a painting pop and others don't, such as yourself? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, a black and white sign. Everybody knows that. Um, it's for high instance, contrast. I, I used to have somebody was talking about. Have um, you ever had someone wear a white shirt and it takes a very little tiny black ink spot and everybody looks at it? Because here's the thing, your eye will go to the bright, lightest light and the darkest dark first. That's where your eye goes. And so, for instance, if your center of interest is a horse. But you have, and it's, let's say, a white horse, all right, with some grays and stuff, okay? Then over in the distance, you've got a barn with a black door and a white, um, say, a white trim around the door. You know how they sometimes do a red barn right. with white trim? Well, your eyes no longer going to go to that horse first. It's going to go over to that stupid barn door with the dark. I don't care if it was black or the, even this color, because your eye will automatically go. So as an artist, you've got to remember, you want to make sure to, to direct your viewer's eye to the, um, uh, let's put a little blue with this. You want to uh, direct your viewer's eye to the, to the subject, not to, not to some miscellaneous thing you've got going in the painting as an extra, okay? So let's put this up here like that. So the question is about black. Well, what happens is it's not, uh, for instance, black can be very effective in an abstract, but when you start using black to mix your colors, you kill them. You might as well have shot them because they it, it dulls them. It really does. It dulls them. But this is something that when, when I taught painting parties for, I was one of the first people in Houston to ever do painting parties with, with Jeff, um, and um, he owned Merlot a Masterpiece. He still does. And I designed about 75% of his paintings. And I taught painting parties for years. I mean, I can do that kind of painting, those kind of things in my sleep. And I teach all kinds of drunk people, absolutely three sheets to the wind, how to paint when they're just, I mean, I'm, imagine how good you are when you're sober. Just, we, we got people, and the, we use black. Of course we use black, because it's a trick. It's a, you know, the, fir thing, the first thing they teach you is to get a little black and do this and that. We didn't, you know, Jeff used to say things to me, like I'd say, well, we're out of this color paint. He'd say, make it work. I said, you know, we really do need the white here. There's none of this make it work stuff here. You know, man, it used to be, make me crazy that we'd run out of colors and run out of paper towels and we wouldn't have paper plates and you know and on and on it went everybody knew we were having a painting party we i worked five nights a week on this stuff i mean i drove for hours sometimes i wouldn't get home till two in the morning but 
what I can tell you is that, that one of the reasons we use black in there is because it's fast. Black and yellow make kind of a green. You don't have to have a lot of colors. It's cheap. It's cheap paint. It's a, just a cheap way to do things, okay? But now we're talking about different kind of art here now, you guys. Um, uh, so, so we're not talking about the very first painting, you know, and they always put black in a, um, if you get a little paint kit or something, they always want to put a little bit of black in it too, okay? See how we're just sort of lightening this up? Let's take a little bit of blue and um, maybe a little bit of um, a little bit of purple with our blue, tiny bit of the yellow. Yeah, let's take a little bit of this blue here. I like that blue color, kind of that almost periwinkle purple now when we do this, okay, like that. Okay, let's take a little bit more purple now. Go right over the top of that. And just kind of blend all that in. Maybe a little purple and blue. That's, that's this ultramarine blue now, okay? So you m remember, when you're doing this, you can, um, let's see, I think I want a little shadow here. So I'm going to come in here like this, put a little shadow under here. So black is the first thing that you're taught to use, and it's in most paint kits. What you can do, and you may not realize it, I used to ask them at Jerry's, because sometimes, like makeup, Here's the thing. Sometimes, it, like just like makeup, certain times your paint manufacturers will put together, you know, cool little art kits, and they always give you black. And some and black is what we call a number one color, like white. And we, what we mean by that is um, it's cheap. No white payment. is your cheapest color. Uh, burnt number white. Uh, they're all ones. Okay, so they're like a number one. Well, for instance, um, let's see. Here's ultramarine blue and a. Um, Let's see, let's see if I got a number on this one from Liquitex. This is, they said that one's a series one, but for instance, um, red, uh, Thalo red. Blue and, uh, and Matisse is a two. Reds are usually four and five, they go up, okay? So b b black's a mom's always a one, and sometimes when you're buying a painting kit, you can ask the store, we, they still do it for us at Jerry's, that you can ask the store if you can switch out um, let's take let's take a little bit of um, oh, let's see I think I want a little bur burnt umber here and I didn't put any out and I think I'm going to take a little bit of that you can ask the store sometimes if you can switch out the black for another white okay so you know something like that or if there's a color you don't want if you can switch it out number for number like ones for ones fours for fours because they're the same amount now what happens is when you go to some place like Michael's they just did an average and all the colors are the same cost like they, they've done they decided everything 17 uh, here in Houston everything was $17 okay so I'm gonna put a little brown with this burnt umber and blue and purple make this a little darker here like that my little shadow coming under here like that okay from here from our thing okay so far so good we're good now let's take a little mixing white the transparent white come along here like this and uh, that's a uh, kind of a um, it's a tra it's really it's it's not as 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 white as titanium which is why it's nice to have okay and then I'm just going to say there's a little bit of that and kind of melt that out and let's see we need a little bit of more color in here let's take a little bit of blue and uh, mixing white that's ultramarine blue got another and, question for you here mm-hmm you talk about directing the viewer to the subject often. Would you consider a video showing good and bad examples of this? Thank you. Yeah, I think I would because you, you, you've got to, um, uh, and we can, we can show you. One of the things I'll do is I'll get some of the old, old dead guys to show you. We'll, we'll, we'll print some of their pictures and show exactly what I'm talking about because they were just geniuses at that. You know, well, of course they were. But um, let's see, let's take a little phthalo blue and add to that and come down here and I'm going to just come under the bottom of my, uh, I don't have to have a complete outline around the whole vase, by the way, I just have to suggest an outline. Here's a little bit of mixing white, and I can make this a little bit lighter here, like that, just have a little bit of light here. Um, all right, so far so good, yeah? And uh, this is bugging me right here, so I'm going to come up here, this little outside edge, I want this a little bit rounder right here. Ooh. Okay, good. All right, now let's just kind of skinny that up with paint. Yeah, so anyway, so back to this, you know, this color. So what happens is, is that um, you will get, you know, you'll get those blacks in the, in the paint thing, and unless you're planning on doing abstracts or signing your name with it. I, I just, you know, I personally don't recommend it. Um, just kind of how it is. All right, so this is probably dry now. Now I've been using blue, so one of the tricks you've got to do is to really 
rinse your brush. I think I'll just switch brushes and start with the clean one. And I'm going to come up here with some yellow. And now we're going to go over. This is our first coat of paint here. I'll just go over these yellow flowers here with some paint. Now, this isn't the final color. The thing about a painting like this is that it's layered. The, the, uh, everything is layered. And so all we're doing now is just doing our first layer of, of yellow over these, these little flowers. We haven't put any shadow colors in. We haven't mixed anything. We're just saying that there's just some yellow, and we're going to do it here like that, too. And just get these colors in here, and that can be drying while we're doing other stuff. Uh, wh what do you do if you don't have mixing white and just have titanium? Um, you, just, um, you, you just do the best you can because you, um, you could do this painting, this particular painting without it. But it's just it's something you really want to have. You, want, you can either get, um, Liquitex makes a really nice small tube of mixing white. It's great for clouds. If you ever see any of my cloud videos on YouTube, you really want it. Uh, um, um, Golden makes, a, they call it zinc white, which is, you know, the same kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of titanium now and show you what I mean. Because this is still a little wet here. Here's some titanium white. Now I'm going over it like that. Now what happens to this edge? Pinch the brush and just come in here like that and just soften that out a little bit. Just soften out. See what I just did? And I can do that too. As long as it's kind of wet here, I'm going to soften this out right here like that. Okay, maybe do a little bit of white right there and just soften that edge out like that. Okay, so we're starting to get our, starting to get our, um, uh, uh, our vase sort of where we're starting to see a little bit of glass here. Here, just, this is dry brush where you just do a little bit like that and, um, have hardly any paint on the brush okay now in the inside of this it's not dark see in this picture see it's not dark so we don't want this dark stuff so let's make a little bit of kind of a light gray color so let's take a little tiny bit of cad red medium in ultramarine blue and a little white and let's make this sort of kind of gray color kind of a blue gray purpley color and let's come on in here to the inside of our vase here and um, Let's put some of that color in here like this. Maybe a little bit more up here, just as long as we're doing it. So you really consider the mixing white, though, or the zinc white as a staple of your palette Yeah, zinc, yeah, yeah, it's a staple. You just have to have, you don't have to have a lot of it. You should have a great big giant tube of titanium because that's what you're going to use all the time. Though there are some artists that call it, they call it mixing white because I'm put a little purple over that now. They call it, they call it, um, um, mixing white because they use it to mix all their colors because if you put mixing white in or zinc white in with the color it will lighten it without turning it chalky okay so it's an it's an interesting it's a, it's an interesting color all right so we're going to put a little now we're putting a little contrast see you got to have to have enough paint where you can put a little contrast in here here's a little blue going here here's a little blue going here kind of get rid of that here's susan's here. asking if i i want to paint a painting on my front door and it's a gorgeous painting. Once I'm done with it, I want to protect it. What should I put over it? Oh, I would put uh, the the, the uh, Liquitex uh, medium and varnish. Just, just varnish it about four or five times. Yeah. That hold up in the outdoor weather. Yeah, it should. Yes, it it binds. It it's not really a varnish. It it binds like like um, molecularly grabs the paint. And then I suppose after that you could put when that dries you could then but I don't know maybe put a little bit of. Um, what what what'd you call varathane or something over the door yeah, too? But I don't, I don't think you need to. I honestly don't think you need to. Okay, I, th I think you're fine. All right, so we're just see here. We just we don't have we haven't gotten real far with this, but we've gotten somewhere, but not perfectly somewhere. All right, I see where I need to come down here like this and um, kind of round off the bottom of this a little bit like that. There we go. Maybe just do this a little bit heavier. Okay, so uh, what do I want in here? So let's take a little bit of yellow and uh, thalo blue, make a kind of a bright green color, put a little tiny bit of brown with it. Okay. Now I'm going to come out from here like this and um, can say that this is touching. Let's make that a little darker, more blue. I can say that that's kind of touching and folding. Got another stem here. Want to make that darker. Like that. There's another stem. It's got one that's kind of coming this way and coming that way. And then you've got one here and one here. And let's see, a little more yellow. 
you've got one here and one here it's kind of touching this way they're kind of curving around see so we're starting to put the stems in the vase now take a little white paint this is still wet that's titanium now and on one side of those stems add a tiny bit a little bit of white like that all right so you've got some stems in there I think I need this stem a little longer maybe curving down here like that and they'll take a little yellow and add a little brighter color somewhere. You can still do this, kind of layer it, right? Barely touch it. Okay, like that. There you go. All right, so we've got some stems in there. Um, good, so that's working. Now, what else could I do? Well, I could take some burn umber and come in the center of this, of where we have the dark purple, a little bit of burnt umber in the center, just that flower. Now I'm going to take some yellow, come over here by my Cad red medium and make some orange. Okay, and so all this I'm doing without having to dry. Now I want to come around here like this and um, put in a little of this orange paint here like that, just around the edge here like that. Now, all right, because I need a little bit of that orange color, okay? This is kind of uneven and fuzzy, all right? So far, so good. Oh, I was going to bring cut some sunflowers from our yard. Oh, right. drag. All right, so I've got this orange color. Now here's some uh, mixing white. I'm going to show you that here. Add some mixing white to that. I want to come over these yellow flowers, just kind of and add a little bit of a shadow here like that. Maybe a little bit brighter orange right here and here like that. I think that was fast. Let's do these. One, two, three. This is an 8x10 canvas for those just joining us. Yeah, 8x10. And we're just, um, just to see how we made this kind of gold color. And um, then there's a lot more here. Let's, rather than keeping moving things from pile to pile, let's just do this. Let's put some yellow next to that red. Because I've got this yellow I'm using for green. So let's take a little of this yellow and make a brighter orange here. Now I'm going to come underneath here like this. Just even some cad red because we can mix. And I'm going to say that there's another layer of flowers that are coming this way on these, like that. Okay. Now how about this one? All right, so let's go over these flowers. I think I'll rinse my brush, wipe it off. I have a little bit of yellow in here, a little bit of mixing white, a little bit of the red. So it's sort of this gold yellow now, okay? Like that, and come over these flowers. Let some of that light show through like that. Maybe I'll take a little bit of brighter yellow. Just peer into the yellow now, cad yellow. There you go, like that. It's all about layers, you guys. That's what I'm going to tell you. It's all about layers. There's a little bit of dark red coming up the bottom here. Same thing over here. Okay. We, we got a question that uh, remind her about finishing her story about the kid who was teased for his great paintings. Now you've got me thinking about it. <laughs> We may have to rewind. We'll be right back the after these commercial <laughs> messages. We're going to have to rewind and see what she said. What did I say? Kids should take teased for his um, great. Oh it's yeah, there was this. There was that. That was like like a few weeks ago. Okay, there was this kid on the reservation who was you know was teased about you know painting. You know, it was an Indian, on Indian reservation back in the nineteen uh, forties or something. And um, and he had he had some physical defects. I've forgotten what they were, but he was born with a few birth defects, and so he got a lot of he got teased about that. And he ended up going to a um, a government school, and they allowed him. He lo always loved to draw, and he actually later became a very well known artist. And you know and stuff. And they said, why? They finally asked him. He said, why did you want to, you know, become an artist? And he said, because. Um, Artists speak the artists speak every language in the world. I thought that was so great. Don't you think so? I think Our, so. Artists speak every language in the world. Okay, so let's let's come here on the side of some of these now, and um, see. We're just going over them, not covering them up completely with this sort of lighter orange color, and um, let's come out around here like this, and just bent like that. There we go. Now You're these, using a half inch angle now? Uh, this is the still three eighths inch. No, that's bigger than three eighths. Don't think so. It looks bigger. 
Well, possibly it does, but um, <laughs> um, perceptions are everything. It says, what does it say? Oh, just, you know, a centipede was happy quite, and telefrog in fun said, pray, which leg comes after which? Which set his mind in such... A pitch he lay distracted in a ditch, considering how to run. That's what you've done to me. I'm just, I was happy quite. You tell this frog, said, what, how big is the brush? <laughs> Can't tell anymore. See, there, you see, I do think I make this up up, and there's a ruler. What do you think it is? It looks like a half. Like, like it's that. not a half inch. I think it's a quarter inch or three eighths inch. That it's is. Why is all your. Rulers have paint on them? Because I used to take them to painting parties because they wouldn't supply rulers. I take all these rulers to painting parties because they wouldn't give us any rulers. Work it out. Three eighths. Three eighths. Okay. See. Awesome. Do you awesome. still have your half inch? I, I'm sure somewhere. So I'm sure there is a half inch somewhere. That I would would be surprised if there wasn't. All right. We're letting that sit. Okay. We're letting that sit. Everybody's happy with that. Now we'll just maybe take a few little light yellow streaks here, a couple of the of the stems. Okay. Let's put a little bit of light yellow down here in the vase. Just one, two, like that, okay? Now, let's make a green, and we'll do all this stuff while we're waiting, okay? So, first thing we're going to do is make this green color. So, we're going to take phthalo blue and yellow, and we're going to make a green color, and we're going to add a little bit of white to that. And we've got this sort of blue-green color. So that's that mixing white color, okay? And then let's add a little ultramarine to that and make it slightly darker, which is too dark, but we want this sort of blue-gray green. So what we want to do is come in here like this, over this dark um, area here, and we're going to just make our underpainting kind of um, green. And this is where you're going to come around your um, daisies here, and uh, or sunflowers, and you're going to kind of go around here like that. So we know we've got some green here, and I might just trim off a little of that flower right there like that, and that's my green underpainting. I like that color green. Let's come down and see if I can't darken up one of these stems like that with this. I want a dark side to this stem there, okay? All right, good. Now, you've got this going here, and then up in, all by itself out here, I've got a little leaf that's coming up here like that, just a little leaf shape. And I think I had a couple little leaf shapes coming up here. So I start with the darkest color first, all right? Now, if you add some more yellow to that while it's still wet, see what happens? You can just kind of light, you can mix colors as you go. Here's just a little bit of a lighter green, like that, kind of bright. And then maybe I'll put a little bit of mixing white with it and lighten this edge. Let's try titanium, see the difference. You can see the difference. Let's lighten this edge up here like that. All right, so those little leaves up there. Now, this kind of has to dry before we can do much of anything else. That, you know, we've done a lot. You've got to admit, we've done a lot. I can take a little bit of white and come down here on some of these stems now that the green set up a bit, add some more highlights on these stems like that just using the angle brush. I do an awful lot with a 3 inch, inch angle brush. And remember, you're... Um, your, the top of your, your uh, vase has to cross over in front of those stems, all right? And let's see, I think we had a stem coming out this way. Jason is asking, would, you, would Ginger ever do a weekend workshop that we can travel to? Yeah, I would do a weekend workshop. I, you know, I, just, I guess we'd have to put an announcement on, the, um, you know, on our website and just uh, have people you know, have us, send us an email if they'd be interested in a weekend workshop and, and you know, what days and so forth. Well, um, I think a weekend would be the weekend days. I'm just saying, I, you know, I could be wrong on that thinking. Well, you know, this is, this is the thing we like about John. He's really <laughs> quick on the uptake, isn't he? I mean, you know, just nobody can pull anything over on you. But, you know, as far as um, Every day's days, a weekend that, you know, also. we're talking about, you know, maybe it would be a good month, you know, like. Um, well, then you should say maybe which month you'd like to have this in. Well, How I could say that, too. Yes, one could say that. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Okay, so there's a little leaf coming down there like that. All right. So now we have to just see, at this point, we got to dry it. I mean, we, we did an awful lot without drying it. And you can see how quickly this paints in, doesn't it? I mean, this isn't really particularly uh, hard to paint in at all, all right? 
it, it just isn't. It's kind of like what I showed you last night. If you didn't catch our video last night, I told you the how to paint a tree for the lazy artist in under 10 minutes. And, and, and in the first, even though it was an hour and a half video, I did a tree in under eight minutes in the first 10 minutes of the broadcast. So you can just watch that and go away if you don't want to watch the whole thing. But we went ahead and I showed you how to do this tree, okay? And how to do a tree in under 10 minutes. Just really simple. And at the very end, I showed you how to go ahead and, you know, do flowers. The same principle of how we did all this. And that's the whole thing, what I try to show on this, on this channel is, look, so what if I can paint something in 10 minutes? I've been doing this for like 50 years. You'd hope I could do something in 10 minutes. The idea is, can I get you to do it? Okay? In 10 minutes? In 10 minutes or any time. I want you to be able to do it. And, and, I, and, and so that's why we spend so much time explaining why something's this way and why I don't mind your questions. If you have a question about, well, why should I do it that way or why shouldn't I use black? What would happen if I did? What, what's the deal? I don't mind telling you. I really don't because the, the more you understand about what you're doing, the happier, you know, the happier your painting experience, the less frustrating. Somebody said that they, I had someone take my wave and water class, master class the other day. In fact, let me show you the new release for our master class. We, we tried to make this one a little bit simpler this month. Wouldn't be so complicated. Here's the release for our new wave and water master class. And it's, uh, you know, we've got a lot of ones that are just uh, waterfalls. And this is a really almost a beginning waterfall. All right. But she said she just was under such stress painting it. We should never be under stress painting this stuff. We should just, you know, look, this is a language. You learn it just like French or English. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the more fluent. If you, if you paint it a little bit every day, you would just get better. You just can't help it. I paint better today than I did 10 years ago. And I would certainly, it, it, you keep improving. You get more fluent. You, your eye sees the patterns more, all right? You, 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 well, also, it's not talent, you guys. Talent is a good idea. Technique is learnable, okay? So that's my thought for the day while I'm doing this. John, can you brag on some of our students that have done some amazing stuff? Why um, I try something? Yeah, I think, hey, let's, let's see what happens when I do that, shall we? Yeah, you got that thing, and let's see, what's stuck to the hair dryer? Ah, okay. I've got, oh, I'm going to mute you? you got to mute me out, you guys. Okay, gonna, going John's going to show you. We're going to do some bragging on some of you guys, okay? Okay, you're gone. This is uh, from Monique Banana. She took our banana lesson and added it, made it part of the kitchen series and put it on the wooden block. I thought that was rather clever. Uh, Marcy did the pipe for Father's Day, the pipe and coffee and book. Another excellent example. These are some of the lessons are from the gingercooklive.gallery website. The banana's available to everybody. That's, that's in a, a freebie area, but she just put it in to the rest of the kitchen series we've got that's on our website. So those are some excellent examples of what people are doing, and Shameless Sammy comes up and says, hey, don't forget to subscribe. That way you stay up to date on what's going on with what's new with us. All right, so you can mute me back, unmute me. I did unmute you. All right, so... Um, oh, you're so close to getting that palette right. Now just slide it down towards the edge of the table. Mm. And then back up a little bit. What's, what's under there? Here's something. <laughs> okay, right, right here? Oh, perfect. All right, Look good. at you. All right, so um, here, let's... I want to show you something about... See this flower right here? I want to show you what we're going to be doing. Um, what we want to do is we want little brush strokes like this almost like little hairs, okay? All right, does that make sense? Yep. Like that. Like, that's what that's you, that's, like needles? Yeah, almost like little needles, like a little fuzzy furry thing. I, never, I don't know what kind of flower this was. I have no idea. I've never seen one in my life, but I thought it was cute, and I'm, I'm for it, you know? I don't have to know it to understand it. And there was one over here, too. There's a couple of them over here, and they're all going to be going like this and kind of overlap. Probably should start with the top ones and then overlap like that. Probably is the way I ought to do it, but... Anyway, like that. Okay, so that's what we're putting in there in case you can't really tell. Because like I said, I'd never seen that plant before, so I have no idea. And uh, so, uh, let's see. So, uh, let's see. Let's take um, an angle brush. Uh, this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. We're going to pinch it. And we're going to add some white to this green that we made, kind of so this blue-green color. 
and we've dried everything. Now we're going to start out here like this. And how you use a brush like this, let's see, what do I got? It's a piece of paper, something I can show you. How you use a brush like this when you're using an angle, if you do this, you, you can't. You can never push the long end up. Does that make sense? You have to, you have to have the long, if you're going up the longer end, the pointy end has to be facing you, and then you go up like that. Just put it in some white here so you can see it. Like that, okay? And what you've got to do is you've got to wet it and pinch it. And um, wet it and pinch it. Now look at the difference. See what I'm saying? Like that. But if you do this, it's like, it's like brushing a dog or a cat with the wrong direction on their fur. So if you're, if you're doing this, no wonder it isn't working for you. Just saying. They, these brushes, they don't come with directions. They just make them and hope you understand how to use them, <laughs> you know. I don't think it would hurt. I, I think it would be rather nice to have little packets of, by the way, this is how you use the brush. Guess what? This is a brush, and these are some things you can do with it. And uh, go to our website, and here's a list. If you bought this brush, here's some videos on how you could make the brush work. Don't you think that would be handy? I think it would be great. If they have some unusual brushes. I mean, in this day and age, what is that? That's um, paying an artist probably nothing for a few hours of their time to explain how the brushes work. But just saying. All right, so... Now we're going to come up like this with the little, using those little angles. You can come up here and make these little furry things. Okay, and I'm using titanium white and that green kind of going fuzzy. Now I'm going to do sort of more of a helter skelter, a little bit darker. Here we go. Helter skelter with the fuzzy like that. And then maybe a little more white on the brush like that. Helter skelter, a little bit lighter here. Fuzzy. See? How cool is that? That's cute, right? Now we're going to come over here and do the same thing. Do, 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 do. We have a lot of new people out here tonight, and we have questions coming. What's the best paper for acrylic? Also, love your techniques. Uh, well, uh, for instance, I, I have the Liquitex. Uh, one of the things i got to tell you, if you live in a city where you have a big art store, they send uh, all the paint companies bring their, send their reps in at least once a year to yak at you guys. You know, and you want to make sure the art store knows to tell you when they, sometimes they forget because they get so overwhelmed, they don't even bother, the rep shows up and no one's even there to hear them. But if you can ever get in on these lectures from the reps, from the either Golden or Liquitex or any of the paint companies, I don't care if it's not even your medium, you can pick up so much because a lot of times they know about the other products too, even if they're only talking about watercolor and you're an acrylic artist, go. And one of the things that the um, Liquitex guy told me is if you want to use, like for instance, regular watercolor paper, and we actually did a video on, on just about a few weeks ago on, it's got a barn and we did it on paper. One of the things you can do is you can take um, a, a medium and gloss medium and varnish like this, okay? And you can put that on the paper and let it dry and then you can paint right over it just like it's canvas. Goodness, I painted on this shirt. This wasn't uh, fabric paint. This was just this kind of paint, okay? So... Um, I, I have a tendency to get stuff all over my clothes, and so finally I just gave up and painted stuff on them so it looked like it was on purpose. So, yeah, so the, I like to use on those canvas pads, I use the Paramount canvas pads that are little um, uh, canvas, little tiny canvas pads, um, six by eight sheets for the small stuff. We did that, right? Little six by eight sheets. That's what these are. It's not paper, it's real canvas. All right. And you do make those in bigger sizes. And they make those in bigger sizes, too. And, um, but the thing of it is, is that they're nice because if you do a bigger one and you don't like something, you can cut it. <laughs> cut, keep the part you like. <laughs> All right. I'm just saying. You can, right? <laughs> and, and somebody said, well, how do you frame those? Well, if I have a video on YouTube on how to frame. It's hysterical because I was trying to show you how to frame one of these canvases, okay? None of my tools were working. It was all about, bought a new tool, couldn't make any of it go. It made John just crazy watching it. He was in Michigan oh. at the time I was doing it. <laughs> thought he was gonna go nuts. nuts. He was screaming at the thing. And I'd show everybody, you get to see the directions to my tools, and then I'm trying to figure out how to put the stupid staples in the, in the, in the tool, and I can't get the staples, stupid staples in, and at this point, they're stupid staples. It's not me that's stupid, it's the dumb staples. They're not going in, and he's screaming, turn it upside down, turn it upside down. The directions mean nothing to me, and, um, but it's a great video. I do, if I finally get through it with a little help from, from those that I've called in to help, and um, uh, the thing of it is is that you can frame these. The point of that is you can frame these. You, you kind of glue them on some foam core, and, and they make uh, frames for even the 6x8. Mm. And then somebody says, uh, 
where do you get frames? And I started to tell you about how to sell paintings too. That's one of the things we were talking about here. Here's so we've gone, gone up a little more yellow in the greens this time for this other little fuzzy one here, like this. So we're kind of overlap these little, little for those of you that are here. joining us a little bit later, we will have uh, reference photos on Paint My. The ones on Paint My Photo currently. If you go to Paint My Photo, and do a uh, search for Ginger Cook, you can find yeah. her painting there. She'll put it up on Pinterest. Again, look for Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest, and we'll have it on the form under gingercooklive.gallery and go to the community center. And Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest is all one word, too. Yeah, it's all smushed together. It's I think you can word. search for it separate and uh, still can find you, it. Can you still find it? Because, yeah. I mean, by the time I got around to Pinterest, there was almost everything. All the names were gone, you know what I mean? <laughs> My daughter said, saying, you got to do Pinterest. Said, oh, good grief. Do you think I have a lot to do. Really, Pinterest now, too? <laughs> But actually, Pinterest is one of my favorite things because I not only show you a big collection of art. We have three video libraries on Pinterest, which show you some of the over the 300 paintings we have in our library on gingercooklive.gallery. Really nice to see the artwork, but also we put our students' artwork up there, our YouTube students' artwork. If you, it's one of our paintings that you've done. Here, it's a little mixing white now. Look what happens. Little highlights here. Just I guess that was titanium. Never mind, I lied. <laughs> I lied. It was titanium. All right, that still works, right? Here's our little highlights here, okay? See, isn't that cute? Look how cute that, that that's working. Now where else can I put that color? Well, I want a little bit of a light color in here too, maybe. I'm gonna say there's a little light color coming under my flowers. And uh, let's see, I want a little bit of a light color right here, as long as I've got some white, maybe a little bit of light color here. See, acrylics dry darker, so it never hurts to come back and say, okay, here's a little light here over the stems like that. See, now it's starting to look like a glass face, huh, here. Maybe something like that. Mm, yeah, good. Now, let's finish this flower. Okay. Uh, so you see how we did all this. Okay. Now, let's see. What else could we do? Oh, yeah. We're going to finish this flower. So it's all about layers. One thing, we take that yellow oxide, and I'm just going to take the, the, um, the, my brush, and maybe some yellow, too, and yellow oxide, yellow, and white. Let's make all three. Let's kind of mix that together. Now, using just the corner... The little pointy end of it, I'm making little dots in the center of this. I could use a smaller brush for that, actually. Well, you know what would be really awesome would be a pointy brush for that. I bet I own one, too, somewhere here. Do I? Yes, somewhere. Ah, here's one. See, pointy brush. Do I have one smaller than that? Probably not. All right, let's see what I can find. All right, straight down, pointy brush, straight down, touch. Too big. Next. feel like Goldilocks. All right, here we go. Pointy brush, smaller. Ah, much better. Okay. Pointy that's brush. That's your number, what's it, two or one? That's a zero. Oh, zero. That's a zero. Number, zero the bristle. round, zero round. Uh, that, this is... Um, the Bristolon? Br Bristolons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cinnamon found these, and they're really wonderful. They're just, they don't make an angle brush, but these are really great. I'm just going upside down, up here like this. These do not have to be perfectly little... Um, little uh, dots here. We're just making these little pointy things like that. M Mary's asking, uh, when painting this on a bigger canvas, how important is composition? Would you be changing anything? No, you just make it bigger. You just blow it up. A, a still life is really a portrait. It's a portrait. A still life of flowers or fruit or whatever, it's a portrait. So you generally center it. Okay? It's a portrait. Good to know, right? Good to know. It's a portrait. So a little bit of purple and brown. Let's come in the middle here and, and tap that back. Let's take a little purple. Tap this back out in the center. A little purple. There you go. Just There you go. Tap it. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, good. So you've got your center. Okay. Now, what has to happen next is you need... You, you, aren't you amazed at how quickly this painted, really? You did what? Aren't you amazed at how quickly this face painted in? Oh, it, it, it's astonishing. I mean, it is kind of is that this is that people always think this stuff is really difficult, and it's not. It's sometimes it's time consuming. And so once you understand how to paint something, if you were to look at say a, a painting of a wolf, and it had a lot of these little furry things, there might take a thousand little brush strokes to make them, and you're looking at that going, yes, I could do it. Do I feel like spending a thousand hours doing those little strokes? No. But it's not, it, at some point, there's going to come a time in your mind where it's no longer difficult. It's just a matter of, you know, do you feel like doing it? The bigger it is, of course, the longer it's going to take you to do it. But then you use a little bigger brushes, and so that's pretty good, too. All right, we're going to take some yellow here, we're gonna, and maybe a little bit of white. And um, 
We're going to make some other, let's see, a little more white. Titanium now, you guys. I'm going to make some other, let's try this again. Yellow, white. You moved my palette. I didn't. It's right here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay? okay, okay. We're going to add some more flowers here like this, kind of overlap some, maybe some pure yellow like that. So we're going to overlap and add some more more flowers kind of kind of in the spaces like that. This is your next layer of flowers. Do you see what, what we just did? We added some and we're going to come over here and add a few here like that. Okay, out like that. And this is our next little layer. Maybe some highlights out here like this. How about here? Let's just... Alright, so th th that's pretty cool. Now let's go back into some orange and do a little bit of touch up in here. Just in between like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. How about a little orange down here, a little reflection here at one, two on the vase? That's not bad. Um, let's see, what else could we do? Uh, yeah, let's take a little bit more yellow and kind of hide some of those a little bit. So it's just here, a little bit more of a, maybe we're going to just, tr you know, add a little bit of shadow here and there. Okay, like that. And like that, but you can see that that's a perfectly fun way. And we're not outlining every flower; these are just sort of brush strokes. Pick your brush up and you know put it down. It's pick pick it up like picking up your feet and putting it down. This one we said was a little longer. I like this one where it came a little bit over the water. Might paint that in again here like that. Make this one a little longer here. And the same thing here. Just kind of say that. Let's extend this down a little bit. See, there we go. So we just kind of enlarge that a little. Now, let's see, do we need to do anything up here with these? No. How about a little bit of light yellow here in the stems? Like that. Barely touch it using that same kind of knife edge. What's neat about a brush like this is you can make it into, turn it into a knife edge, or you could turn it into a. Um, uh, um, Gonna come out here with a little bit of purple and brown. And make this. We're gonna go out a little wider here. I think we got this a little small. So let's just widen this up and then put our gold back out. I actually had more gold on this one. And then I'll put my pointy brush and put that yellow back. So uh, one thing we want to, you know, we always like to tell you some fun stuff. And I'm starting to tell you about what you want to paint for the living room when we started here. How you're gonna sell your brush, sell your artwork. So paint stuff in the living room people want to buy. And if you're not sure what people are buying, go visit a furniture store and see the kind of art that people are buying for their living room. Okay? That's really a good thing to do. Go to, go to um, what they call a big box store in the business. A big box store like, um, say, Bed Bath & Beyond. And, you know, they have all those prints up on the wall. See what people are buying to put in their house because paintings go out of style. So, for instance, one 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 year magnolias are in for instance if you live in the south but maybe in new york you couldn't give a magnolia painting away a lot of times it's the um it's regional it's re it's regional and the colors that go in a house say in florida you know the sort of soft pastel colors you know probably wouldn't do well in new jersey okay so maybe if you're on the coast um Maybe nautical paintings would be well because people are kind of, you know, they see the ocean, so they want sailboats, they want water. Ocean's pretty much, you know, but, you know, inland in the desert, it, they might buy an ocean too. Might, why, why might they buy that? Because um, um, they hate the desert. They want to see the ocean because they can't stand it. So just because it's the desert doesn't mean they wouldn't buy it. Okay, a little bit better, right? We had to kind of enlarge that a little bit, put, to put some more in there. So you, you can't rule it out, all right? So that what people might buy. But one thing you can sure tell is that you go into those furniture stores and see what people are buying and then see if there isn't something you couldn't paint for that. There's so many different styles of art. Um, this, for instance, is a, you know, I wanted to show you this. See, this is another um, painting of were. flowers. This That's was good. one I worked on today. All right, let me just move this out of the way for a minute. All right, now this is going to be on YouTube sometime next month. We're gonna, I'm going to have a YouTube tutorial on this. And, and again, it's so, so these flowers overlooking the water. So it's not quite abstract, but it's certainly not as detailed as this. But again, look at the neat colors with the purple log and the pink flowers and stuff. 
So that's something that's coming up for you guys on, on YouTube. We want to, this um, Thursday, yeah, uh, for our members, I wanted to show you this is our, what we're painting uh, for our members. This is our release this uh, week. If it's not, do you think it'll be Thursday? Yeah, it'll have? be Thursday. So John thinks it'll be done Thursday. We got this one out, out last week. This isn't for our Canadian friends. This is the 150th centennial July 1st There's for Canada. It's not centennial. It's just, just, it's that funny word. It's 150. Centennial is 100 years. There are 150 years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> centennial is 100. It's just in something else. Well, it's just nice that you know these things. You know. Anyway, they're doing. They're <laughs> well, I typed it up on the website. That's the only reason I know it. All right, they have it. They're doing something, and this is called uh, Cabins in the Canadian Rockies. Right, log cabins in the Canadian Rockies with a stream. So this is again for our members on our website. If you haven't, you know, seen this, this is what we got. We got this. We didn't get this released till last Saturday. If you're a member, gingercooklive.gallery. Not only do you get personal art coaching, which is somebody asked when we might do a seminar, but you know, if you're a member of our of our group, you can send me your artwork. In one once a month, you can send me something you made up or something or found somewhere else, and I'll help you with it. And um, besides, and you've got unlimited stuff. You just over three hundred lessons. We had four a month, and you want help with something? Send it in two or three times. We'll help you. We don't mind. That's three what we're here four. for. And uh, at some point, we'll run out. We'll run out of room for personal art coaching, and then we'll have a waiting list for those that want that feature. But um, right now, we're still in. It's still available. So, you know, take advantage of it because you're grandfathered in. Once you become a member of our, of our, our, on our website, okay, once you become a member, you're grandfathered in. If, you, if your subscription doesn't lapse, you're grandfathered into that price regardless of what we do in the future. And, you have, and you're guaranteed, you know, the personal art coaching, okay? That's kind of, I think that's kind of cool. Well, I'm going to come back um, over here with a little bit of blue and purple, John, and I want to just... Um, uh, add a little bit of a shadow. Let's see, maybe just blue and purple here. Let's, let's see if I can find a new place to do that. Just want to do a little bit of, just a little shadow here and a little bit of shadow under there, here on our vase, and uh, make sure that we've got the shadow here on our, coming out under here. And let's the see. The celebration what, is this weekend, up in Canada. Oh, e is it? Eve's on. Yeah, Eve's on. Yeah. Well, you know, it just. Um, uh, you know, my, my daughter, Cinnamon, you guys may not know that, but uh, her her uh, kids, when, when Honey is now 12, was, was five, just turned six, or would turn six that fall, they moved up to Canada for a year. It was supposed to be longer than that. John got a job up there, because he's also a computer g gaming guy. He got a job up there building computer games and something for a company. And uh, so they had a contract, and they were going to stay up there, and it was really, I so missed them. They, they went, they moved to Canada, and... Um, they loved it. The only reason they came back was because uh, the company went bankrupt and all the little contracts in the world, it was just, it did nothing. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of soften this up here now. We're going to do a few little things that kind of touch it up now. I want to say thank now. you to Becky for the, do the donation. Oh, thank you, Becky. We really appreciate it. So you guys want to hear a great story? Everybody <laughs> likes my stories. Okay, so my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter is smart as a whip, you know, um, she doesn't really have a, she, even to this day, she really doesn't seem to have any self-control over what she says. But um, she's very, very smart. And so she had gone to the school in Houston. We, it, it's a, you get in through the lottery system, and it's, it's, a, it's like a private school, but it's public. But they can expel anybody for any reason, so that they're all about learning. And in kindergarten, they had this child reading to the third grade level. She never saw recess. So her name was always on the board because she'd go to the restroom at 5 and never come back, and she refused to learn to tie her shoes, stuff like that, but eventually she learned. But, um, but she was a straight-A student, and she learned she really could read. But nobody, we, none of us thought it was so remarkable until the other kids started going to school, and we realized, yeah, like I said, it's pretty special, you know. I think it was, but anyway, she could do all that. And so they're at the airport, and nobody's paying any attention to the fact that she can read signs. She can read the signs, because, I mean, they're nervous. They're moving to Canada. They're going on an international flight. It's a big deal. There's stuff's in a moving van. It's all heading up there. They're leaving from Houston. And Honey goes up to this uh, security guard, and you've got a picture of this little you know, five-year-old girl with long blonde ringlets and hair down in the middle of her back, and really cute. And she looks up at the guy and says, just before they're ready to get on the airplane, she says, excuse me, sir, I want to assure you we're not carrying any weapons. My dad took all our guns to Grandma's house before we left. Anyway, that's what she said. Now, you have to understand, they had no guns. John had some sort of sad little rifle that didn't even shoot that, um, 
uh, he'd made in high school. They had no guns, but you know, it made it sound like that. You know, there was an armory over at our place. Anyway, I thought that was very <laughs> funny. It's just that's my Canada story. Okay, and uh, so when she got to Canada, she uh, they went. They, their school system's a little different. Houston, the kids are all out of school in Houston. They get out at the end of May. And um, Canada, they, they go a few more weeks, and so they thought that it would be a good idea for her. I'm going to put a little, Tim, just adding a few more lights and shadows here. See what I'm doing here to my uh, vase here? I'm kind of mimicking this, you know, coming back and doing it, so I'm telling you this. So she's, she, gets, um, um, she gets into the, you know, the school system there. And remember, you can come back with dark purple here as I'm telling you this story. And kind of cut into your uh, pick your 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 flowers if you need to if you need to carve some up a bit. Yeah. So um, there you go. Thank you. So um, anyway, so the, so they introduce her to the principal and they suggest that she'd like to to continue on the school year um, and come back to school. So that she, I guess, probably ostensibly, so she could, you know, you know, see a bunch, you know, see a bunch of kids, right? And you know, see more kids. And it's a little more purple here. And um, she looked at the guy, and she goes, the principal, and she goes, "I have already graduated from kindergarten. I have a diploma. There's paper. There was even a ceremony." She's just like, it's "Like, are you kidding me? You know, already at five, she's figured out she's interested in spending three more weeks, right?" Anyway, they made her go anyway, so she learned to meet some of the kids. It was a good plan. All right, I'd say that we were um, pretty close to doing this. I want to just say that we've got uh, if you, the last, this is the last week, Friday's the last day for our um, auction for our uh, uh, puzzles. These were puzzles from my artwork that were sold all over the world in three languages. Um, and uh, let's see, the Spray de Vin, and um, uh, you see down here it's the Spray de Vino. So it was, uh, Anyway, that means spirit of the wine, in case anybody wants to know. There's a, just, I have uh, all these different ones, and uh, they were so, what, how many different ones? I do think we have, we have eight different ones. We have eight different puzzles, and these were uh, some of the samples that they had given me. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and keep one set that's an original set. And we said, so we have these testing out our auction software, gingercooklive.gallery, on our auction. If anybody wants to come check it out, these are really pretty puzzles when they're put together. And again, they're all from artwork that I have done in the past. Uh, my fa one of my favorites is this is La Muse. This was um, the name of this hotel that we rented. Sandra and I rented this whole place. It was a 26 bedroom hotel from some Americans. And we actually, we each got a room. The place was haunted. It was just creepy um, to us. Okay, I don't want to get sued by these people. It was very creepy to us. Okay, we felt very creepy. Cinnamon's very sensitive to these kinds of things. And uh, we used to, the biggest fight we ever had between the mother and daughter was one who had to go down and get the laundry out of the basement because it was so scary to go down those stairs. Nobody wanted to go down and get the laundry. You went last time. No, I can't go again. I, I can't bring myself to go down there. But anyway, that was um, that's uh, our puzzles. If anybody is interested in checking it out, last week for those. Last Friday. week for those auction ends a Friday. Sorry, I think I got pretty close to this, don't you think so, John? Well, I think you just, did marvelous. You know, I mean, I'm just, I just want you to see that this wasn't that hard. Again, this wasn't that hard to do. And I might take some pure cad red medium now. Here we're going to do a little color pop. See, like one, two, three, boop, 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 boop. See, you don't need much. Maybe just a couple, just a couple places, and maybe once, once down here, and. Um, that's what, you know, that's what we've got. Oh, I saw that a little bit of orange here. Yeah, I like that right there, a little bit of orange right there. I think I could probably go back and even uh, even exaggerate my green a little bit more, but I don't think we have to do anything. I th I'd say we were um, done with our little fuzzy things like that. And can, that's you, can you explain what pointillism is? Yeah, pointillism. <laughs> did, was somebody asked that question, pointillism? Yes, they did. Yeah. Pointillism, um, if you look it up, uh, you know, the best explanation for any of this stuff is that we now have something called Wikipedia. And you just type that in and they'll give you much better explanation for what I do. Pointillism is for these, <laughs> these go beyond sock folders. Yeah, it's, wait, the people that do, do pointillism go beyond sock folders. Sock folders are the people that when they do their laundry, they very neatly fold their socks and put them in the drawer in little neat little rows. 
Uh, pointillism is where you take little tiny dots, really literally dots of paint, and you cover the whole canvas, and your eye will start to mix the colors on the canvas. Well, it's really how printing is done. You know, that's how print oh, yeah. your printers, are, your 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 inkjet printers are is pointillism. Yep, little baby dots being shot out. Little baby dots being shot out. So that's what they, uh, you know, that's what they did. That's what it is. And um, uh, Dominique is saying that the leaf on the bottom left needs a highlight. <gasps> She's right. It needs a highlight. Thank you. Let's zoom in on that puppy. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Look at that. The leaf on the bottom right, right needs a highlight. Yep. Yep. It sure does. Let's see. My paint's kind of dried out now. Let's see if I can't wake some up here. All right, here we go. Yeah, let's just get another green going here. Yeah, it got, you know, acrylic started a little darker. It got a little dark, didn't it? Okay, let's see. We can make it a little bit darker than that on one side. I love acrylics because you can just paint over them. Here, like that. There we go. Here's a little bit darker. There we go. Better? Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, you see these things. But that's great that you saw it, see? You, you know, paid attention. It, that's, well, it's not that, but it's just that when you see that, tell you what, take your painting up to a mirror, look at it, turn it upside down. That's one of the great tricks. And um, uh, just remember, uh, you know, I'll see, I want to finish one last story about selling your artwork. <laughs> Cinnamon and I had gone to Art Expo in New York when, when I, you know, back around 2000, 2002, I had some big New York art shows. And, um, my publishers had taken me there, and so Cinnamon had gone with me as to help me do my show. And we were walking around all the booths, okay? And there was this one guy, and he had this booth full of these abstracts. And he wasn't there, but his, uh, I don't know, girlfriend or whoever she was, was selling his artwork. And she said, do you see these paintings? I'm going, huh? And they weren't particularly well done abstracts, but they were abstracts. Um, she says... They're done with blood. And then I'm thinking, man, this is New York. I mean, who did they kill on the subway to do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just going. And then where's the, where are the cats? You know what I mean? I mean, and I'm, I'm a little alarmed. And, and she's sitting there. Cinnamon got into a big conversation with her because she had read in her history of art class in college, she had read all about some artists in Germany years ago that actually used blood in their artwork and died, you know, bleeding themselves to death for their art, literally. But it was really funny. Now, one, I... If she had been at an Anne Rice convention, she would have sold out. You know, Vampire Lassat, everybody was at blood painting. Honestly, got to go in my house. But chances are um, the average pu you know, publisher looking at the average person, art gallery that's buying it, isn't going to bring any of those paintings home and try and sell them in their gallery in Kansas. You know what I mean? Because that's what Art Expo is. And all the galleries from around the country come and try to find art that they want to put in their galleries. That's how they find new artists and publishers and so forth. And, and artists find publishers there. But, I mean, it was a, you've got to know your audience, you know, when you're painting things. You may paint the best, bestest, bestest spark plug ever, but chances are no one's hanging it over their couch unless you're big Indianapolis 500 fans and that's your idea of, a, you know, really great painting. So think about that. Think about your subject when you're painting, who your audience is. Good advice, huh? Becky said she, when she did an art show, I gave away wine at my booth. It worked well. I ended up selling six pieces in three hours. That is a good <laughs> idea. You know, another really great trick when, you're at, when you have a booth is you've got to get people to stop. They're all wandering around. Usually it's art shows, like a home show. Everybody's wandering around, masses of crowds. So how do you get them to stop in your gallery? If you're going to give away anything like wine or candy, can, <laughs> candy's good. Bring it inside the booth so they have to walk in to get it. They just can't b grab Keep a handful it, yeah. of it as they pass by. And one of the things I read from a guy by the name of Jack White, and he wrote a book on the, uh, on the Internet that you can buy at his website, jackwhiteartist.com, and it was called The Mystery of Making It, okay? And he never actually published it on Amazon. I don't know why. Jack's, Jack's probably in his 80s now, if he's still alive. I don't even know if he is. If he still has a website out there, but you can still get his book. This was really called A Mystery of Making It by Jack White. And one of the things he said, and that's so, so, so important, was he talked about, you know, trying to stop the traffic at an art show. And he said, so what we did was we had some small pictures, you know, six by eight, little tiny small pictures. Nice, but small, you know, smaller than this, okay? And I had a whole wall full of them that were, the, were at a price point that anybody could just write a check for and go home with, okay? 
And then I said, you know, I said, win one of these pictures. And we need your, we need a mailing address because that's what you want. So you can invite other people to art shows. You want their email and mailing address. So you can win one of these. Pick which one you'd want to win. And people would then have to stop and look at, you had 12 pictures. They could win any of the 12. And they'd have to decide, or maybe it was three that they could pick from. I think it was three they could pick from that they could win. And we said, which, which one of these would you like? And then they had to think about that painting going in their house. <laughs> And then they're going, you know, I never will win anything anyway. How much are these? And then pretty soon they're buying something because you've stopped and then they get to know you. Because people don't care what you know till they know that you care. That's the other thing. So, you know, you just can't start selling people stuff. Huh? You know, you got to, there's a whole art. We can have a whole seminar on how to sell at an art show and sell your artwork. But uh, getting, getting a mailing list is, does, does not hurt. All right, so I guess we can we can feel free to sign this now. I feel pretty good about that, John. I'm gonna just sign that. Let let me just shake the pen up. These are these uh, Posco pens, and I have to say they've lasted longer than anything I've ever had. Yay, yeah, yay. Where'd that put that paper? I was playing with a piece of paper. Where's my paper? I don't know. Well, maybe I can use this. Okay, there. All right. This I signed with a brush, and this one I'm signing with a pen. These are really cool. We, um, I like the white ones, and they're once this dries, it's it's permanent. So uh, Sue um, Dean says that Jack White passed away in 2016, according to Google. Oh gosh, he was um, he was the first artist that was um, from Tex you know, Texas. He was an absolute great artist, really good. But I loved his books. I don't know if he can still get them if his wife is still uh, publishing those. I hope so. She, he really taught his wife to paint and, and got her painting, and, and he pushed her toward the end. You know, she uh, does a lot of bright, colorful things. I'm trying to think what her name is. I'm sorry. Apologize to her if I can't remember. But um, anyway, he did a lot of pushing his wife uh, to paint. You know, uh, when I say pushing, I don't mean uh, encouraging her to paint or something like that. I mean that he, he marketed her like nobody's business. I mean, he, this guy was a marketing genius. He wrote three books, The Mystery of Making It, something and he has three and I have all three of them really learned a lot about selling your artwork and marketing and the business of art if you want to know about the business of art try to get a hold of those guys because that his stuff was was timeless yep there you go well I did we make it through another night did we made it through another night we thank you very much we hope uh, we see you next Monday before we uh, you know uh, uh, you know, likes and comments, whatever comments you made here, then we appreciate them. They don't really show up on our, um, until until this is over. So <laughs> and feel free to come back and make positive comments. We really love to hear from you. And uh, somebody, actually, somebody actually wrote a comment last night. And I think this tree, one of those tree videos was really good, you guys. I really felt like, like, look, we're all friends. And I thought this was really good. And this guy goes, well, that was worthless, waste of time. I'm thinking, well, you know, how soon did you have to watch that? Maybe five minutes in, it wasn't for you. That's okay. We can't be all things to all people. You know, we're not magic. And guess magic. what? You make a comment like that, you can't make comments on our channel anymore. We block, block you. Yeah, you know. It's a, we make it real simple anymore. Yeah, just, it's kind of, almost kind of, you know. Anyway, so we thank you very much. As you see, I'm, I'm, I put a few little white streaks in Oh, you could be play. playing for this with ours. Well, I'm not going to play with that. Brush is going in the water. <laughs> I will just put my hands up here like this. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, this stay was tuned wonderful. for more information on the uh, whatever the gang's up to with their yeah. Christmas in. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have some sort of Christmas in July, you guys. I gotta tell you that that's the secret. That, that's Christmas what in Sammy, July, and we'll let you there know. There they are, Sammy, Ellie, and Chester. We're gonna let they you know about that. Caught them earlier up by the pool. So that's why they're out by the pool discussing it, and we're gonna get the details from them and pass it on to you. So have a great evening. Thanks very much, and happy holidays for next week. We'll, we'll be uh, see you next Monday. Good night, everyone. Night.